Hi, Genevieve Jacobs with you for this week's news update for Region Media from Government House at Yarralumla where a really wonderful news story has been unfolding. We're here for the award of 66 Overseas Humanitarian Awards given by the Governor-General to the Aspen medical staff who responded to the West African Ebola crisis between 2013 and 2016. People who charged right into the teeth of danger. Glenn Keyes is the Chair of Aspen Medical. Dr Bernie Towler was part of the response as was Leo Cusack. Uh, Glenn Keyes, this has been a, a remarkable and quite moving service. What was Aspen Medical asked to do in West Africa? Give me a sense of what the challenge was for you. We were asked to do what no private company has ever been asked to do in the world before, which was respond quickly uh, on behalf of several nations to provide a complete Ebola response with all of the staff, all of the systems, all of the procedures to help an area that was the worst uh, infectious disease crisis since the outburst of the Spanish flu in the First World War. Mm. It, it's remarkable in size and scale. Leo, give me a sense of the threat to people's lives, the scale of this epidemic, how big this crisis was. The crisis was unprecedented. It, uh, it used to, Ebola used to simply die out in villages, but with uh, globalisation, people had started to move around. So the fear is getting into those third world nations, into their uh, major cities such as Freetown, and the, 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 the spread of the disease, it, it spreads very easily, and the, and the lethality of the disease is also unprecedented. Mm, and uh, Bernie, it's, it's a terrifying disease. Now, you're a doctor. I was really moved during this ceremony to hear that 1,400 people responded to the call and ran straight towards this terrifying disease but tell me what it's like working with people. So um, I guess um, for people like myself, um, health practitioners, um, it is a, um, a scary disease, you're right, it has a high mortality rate, but it's also one that we know a lot about in terms of um, containing it. Um, and so I felt very well prepared um, before going uh, in terms of my general medical knowledge, but also the, um, the prep that Aspen put us through. Um, and then when I was there, I think that we were incredibly well um, resourced and structured and we had in place the right sort of um, skills and team and infrastructure structure to really do a good job and keep ourselves safe and also make an impact in terms of caring for people who had this horrible disease. Mm. And so much so, Leo, that, um, that, that nobody was infected on the Aspen team. That is extraordinary. We had uh, some excellent training provided by some partners in country as well, but also the, uh, the, the standard of teams that we had over there and the adherence to, that they had to stand to both the locals and expatriates uh, meant that the, the discipline was high. Uh, and it was uh, yeah, a real team effort to make sure that uh, we came through unscathed. Yeah. Glenn, we're standing in front of a slightly rough bit of board here with a lot of handprints on it. Can you tell me what that's all about? Um, this is the Wall of Hope. This was at our uh, Hastings Airfield facility uh, for the Ebola treatment unit. And when someone would survive Ebola and they would then leave the red zone, um, they would come out, we'd issue them new clothes and they would come out to their families. Um, they were hugged by all of the, uh, the Aspen staff because that's the first time they'd been able to touch them in the, that entire time. Um, and then they would come over to this board, they would select a colour, put their handprint on and write their name under it and that was a way of sort of affirming that they were now out of Ebola and they were now back into the community and one of those survivors to get back on with their lives. And Bernie, of course, tragically, there's a current Ebola outbreak. This is the 2013-16 outbreak we're recognising, but Ebola is once again current in West Africa. Yes, unfortunately. Um, so we have made progress, though, and I think um, in terms of the learnings from that period in 2014-15, um, that's been able to be utilised um, for the current outbreak. Um, I, I, I guess part of what happens is that these diseases take hold in really poor communities um, who don't have good um, resources. Um, and and who also have some practices which mean that you have to work at a really local community level to try and contain the diseases and that's often really quite difficult to do and as um, Leo said they then often really will take um, hold quite quickly um, and so you're doing, doing catch up then. So yes unfortunately Ebola is endemic and in a number of these countries and it does um, rear its ugly head from time to time. But the 2013-16 outbreak is what's been recognised here. The effort from Aspen Medical, the Canberra company, many Canberra people among those staff, and a remarkable story both of innovation, energy and also courage. 
a terrific bit of local news. Also making news on the Ride Act this week. Go to the news uh, site and have a look. We've got all sorts of stories. The discovery of another Mr Fluffy house in Curtin. A shock for the owners and a shock for all concerned there. And of course there is continuing discussion about the 39 Mr Fluffy houses that have not yet been demolished or dealt with um, by uh, the ACT government in acquiring them. Uh, we're also learning about a free bulky waste collection on a yearly basis. Uh, the ACT government has just announced that. Um, there's a fabulous Tongan restaurant that's got a huge amount of attention and more seriously some concerns over those bus network problems that continue to evolve and now concerns from the Women's Centre for Health Matters that say that there are real concerns for women walking home such as the articulation of the bus routes and the changes that have been made. But look, go to the website Get engaged in all the big Canberra conversations that we're having there. Sign up for our newsletter, which goes into your inbox every week, and join in with us as we talk of Canberra. I'm Genevieve Jacobs. This is Region Media from Government House.